three meanings, seven meanings. That's why Pradhaka Chayana Swami says in 55, 54 Sutra as Saranam Upaya Maha Upaya Maha I uh, you have to approach me accepting as Upaya that's what here Pradhaka Swami is saying that is in the next Sutra 56, he is explaining to us. In the Sarana Saddam, Rakshita Vayyum, Gruhattayyum, Upayattayyum, Kata Kadavade Agilum, Ibidatil, Upayattaye, Upayattaye, Kata Giradu, Kata Giradu, Kirode, Kirode, Sera Vindu Hayale, Sera Vindu Hayale. In the Sutra. So it says, in the Serena Saddam, the word Serena here. The fifth word, which is uh, the first part of the sloka, is uh, saying three things. Upaye, Gulhara Kshitroho, Siddha Serena Nityayam, Sampratam Chesha Siddhoyam, Upaya Theka Vajakaha. That's how it is defined. So, what is saying is Rakshita one who protects, is also called a serenum. No, as we say, no, I surrender to you. Serenum virtuna, in serenum virtuna, what does it mean? I am accepting you as my protector. There it is, protector. <coughs> serenum virtutam, and accepting one as a protector. So there the meaning of the word serenum is protector. Guruhattayum. Guruham is also a meaning for the word saranam. And upayatayam, it also says the upaya. Karta kadavade agilam, though it is able to show all these three. If vidatil, in the Chema sloka, in the first part, when the word is used, upayataye kartvikaratu, it is showing as Upaya only. Why? Because Kirode it should match with the previous context. Saravan it has to go along with the sloka. So here it shows that meaning. Each word may be having many meanings. You have to take a suitable meaning among the meanings that are available. See, they are called Nanarthas. Nanartham is one word having many, many connotations, many meanings. So which meaning is required for you? That you have to take. It depends upon the context. Right? Basically, as we often discuss about a word, a sign dhavam, do you remember that word? We used several times. Sainthava, the father was teaching to the son in Sanskrit. And that day he introduced a new word, Sainthava. Sainthava has two meanings. So one is a horse and salt. So both meanings are there to the word. So because father was teaching Sanskrit, he was very much fascinated to talk to the son in Sanskrit. So father was sitting and just eating food. There the salt was a bit less. So he said, hey putra, yes dad, sign the anaya. He said, anaya is? Bring it. So he said, sign the anaya. Then the, the boy started thinking, sign the horse, 
I'll say it, we put the word sign. Come on, let me bring the horse. So he went into the garden and then the horse was just moving around and then just he got hold of the horse and brought into the kitchen, into the dining hall where father was just sitting in a, in a banana leaf and then the horse came into the, into the place and you can imagine what would have happened there, what was happened. Father was really upset in you. Oh no, I mean, Saint Devon is also salt. You don't bring salt. Why you brought a horse? Dad, you said horse is also part of means, right? But you need to know that salt is also one of the means. <coughs> okay, Dad. Then, father went for sleep next morning. When father was about to leave for just his morning tour, he said, Putraka! Yes, Dad. Sign the Bahamaya. So Esther, I brought my horse and father was upset. And he said, no, salt is the main being, you know, don't you know that? So come on, let's take salt. And then in a big plate, he kept the salt and this he came right from down. And father was upset again. Don't you know horse is the meaning? But Esther, I brought a horse, right? And you said salt? Because, and so I brought salt now. God, you need to know the context. If it's a food context, then you have to bring only the salt. And if it's the context of travel, and then you need to bring the hearse. You need to observe the context and you should give the meaning, understand the meaning, and do the work accordingly. Don't you know this much? Each word may be having several meanings. You need to pick up such meaning which goes in accordance with the context. So also here, because it should go with the context of which is talking about the means here, and he said, you know, give away the dharma and accept me as the dharma. And so, and we are, we are accepting him as dharma, what for? What does the dharma does to you? It becomes a means to acquire something, either punya, or papa, or mantra, or any that in that kind, you know, any of such kind. We have to if we have to acquire, then you have to adopt a dharma. So basically, dharma is to acquire something. So here, how you are accepting God as that one? It is a means. So, saranam, maam ekam saranam raja. And we alone accept as, not the, not the goal, but as the means. Because it's a prakarana for that, context for that. He wrote a saravin goyale because he has to go along with the previous context. <coughs> mm. And then, what's the next one? Here in the commentary, the Manavada Mahamani just discussed a few things. He discussed just a few things like that. Is really the serena, Saranam, is it required here? Is it required here? 
because the context itself is talking about the dharma. Dharma is only just a means. And we are all talking about only the Nasarva Dharma, Varit Yajya, Maam, Ekam. It is only just you are accepting or adopting him as only means. Then why the word used here as Serena? It is starting with Serena, the Dharma only. Then what is the purpose of using again the word Serena? Is it specifically required to be used? Then he said, yes, it is required because instead of thinking something, verbally putting it is really good. Akshepata praptati avihanika sikrahyatvam is a saying. That means if you, if you infer something, if you imagine something, and then, you know, just saying something, Instead of that, if something is just literally presented before you, that's very easy to accept, to understand, and also to follow. So that is called Akshepata Prapta means we have to first of all establish something and then you have to think about it. Oh, maybe this is required, so we can take it and we can do it. This is called Akshepata. The Abhidhanikam is verbally presenting it, verbally saying about it. So, the Saranam is verbally saying, accept him as Upaya. So, instead of uh, discussing how we have to accept him, God, here as a means or as a goal, then we, we keep thinking about it. And then we have to refer the context. Here the context is talking about <coughs> the Dharma. So, Talking about him as a goal is not really required, but we adopt many means which block him from saving us. That's why it is always better to accept him as a Bhaya. That's what we discussed, right? But all the discussion went on, on and on, just because we thought here the Upayatvam is very important. That's how we discussed. But now, then a discussion presenting verbally is always a better choice. So here, Lord Krishna, right away said, Saranam Raja, accept me as Upaya. So then there will be no doubt at all, there will be no question at all. There is uh, how to accept him, that he are the Maybe that is not necessary, maybe this is necessary. Sometimes your logic may not work out perfectly. So then you may fail at times. So all these doubts are not really required. So verbally is just making it very clear. Saranam, Upaya Maha. And then Vraja. Vraja. Buddhipanna. Buddhipanna means believe in this, have faith in this. Accepting, not physically, that what I said, accepting God as Upaya is not physically, you are not going to Him, you are not just holding Him. It is only in the thought you decide, yes, He is my means to come out of the karmic bondages. That's how this you designed it. So buddhi panna is the meaning of what it is said. When, in fact, the, the word Vraj, Vraj means to go. Vraj, to go. Vraja is an instructive, <coughs> is, is instructive mood, the word. Do it. Vraja, you go. That's how it is. So when the Vraja word says go, why you are saying, you know, just believe in it, or adopt it, or accept it as your, as your means? Viswasi, you know, Viswasi, true. Now why you have to say something like that? There is a rule in Sanskrit, like Gatyathaha, 
Bhutyatha. Any root talks about the movement also says about the internal acceptance with the knowledge. So any root. Ah, Gamyate Kalaha. Somebody says. Then I am just leading the time. This is something what we say, this is Gamyate, yes. I am spending my time. That's how that we say. My time is I am doing something with my mind. I am discussing something. I am reading something. You know, Kavaya Gamyate Kala. Or Japan and Gamyate Kala. Tapasa Gamyate Kala. Tapasa Gamyate Kala. I am spending my time with tapas. And you are not going anywhere. You are standing there only. Or you are sitting there only. But you are thinking more and more on it and spending your time. So Gamyate there, that doesn't mean that you are just moving something. It is with the mind you are doing something. So any root talks about the moment always says something related to the knowledge also. So here, when it is said, Vraja, that means go. As a matter of fact, the meaning of the Vraja is reach there, reach that. So where to reach here? So it is in the mind we have to reach him. So accept him, adopt him as the means. Atyavasi means Vishwasin Su. Believe in it. Have faith in it. Confirm this. That's what it means. But if I think probably we will be remembering the same thing again, what we already discussed. He already said, Mom, Ekam. The Ekam comes here and it will be attached to the Braja. What we think usually when I hold on him, that means I, I believe in him. So my belief in him saves me. Because I believed in him, so he saves me. That is what usually we think. To condemn that, that the Eka becomes Eva and then it becomes an eliminator. You know, it avoids not even your faith that works. Only his decision that works. That's what we already discussed about it. You know? So here what he is saying, this uh, Viswasam, what is talking about, what a kind of faith it is, what a kind of faith that we need to have here, this is like, it never enters into the group of Upayas. This Viswasam, this faith is not the means at all, because I, I had faith, so he protected me, no. So then the Viswasam becomes a means. But here it never enters the arena of Upaya. <coughs> and Prabhakantara Parityaga Purvakam. Prabhakantaras, there are many other means. Giving up all the other means, I had faith on God. That is how I surrendered to God. So I am not having any other means at all. God accepted me to surrender. And also, He is the one who made me to surrender to Him. So it depends upon 
him or me. That is God accepted. That was Anumati Purvaka. Because he accepted, I surrendered to him. Otherwise, I was fine. Because I have Chaitanya, because I have the knowledge, it makes me to do something. So this acceptance, this faith I have today on him, is just as a result of the Chaitanya I have. And this is also including pleading in it, a request in it as I surrender to you for saving, for accepting, for offering the services to you which you need to accept. So this is including a kind of pleading in it, prarthana garbham we call it. And also whatever that I do also makes you feel pleasant. Bhagavan Mukha Vikasa Hetu. So now it pleases you when I, because you made me to surrender. And when I surrender and then I stand before you, then you say, oh, you did what I said. That's fine. He feels happy because of our surrenderance, because of our acceptance. And also it is fit for our nature also. What is the nature of the soul? Subserving so God. Surrenderance to God. What we say as Seshattvam. This is actually a what we call a showcasing for that. When we surrender, when we have a faith in Him. And also this never takes long time and it never fails also. The surrenderance to God never fails. There is a saying, Bhagavantunni Vishwasinsaka chedina vaduna Vishwasinchi chedina vadu How do you say that? Those who believed, those who did not believe in God, there are incidents of they lost something. But those who believed in God never lost the things. Probably it must have taken any time for them to be saved. But obviously, who believed and spoiled, who believed and lost, there are no such incidents anywhere in the in the in our history. Either in Ramayana or in Bharat or in Bhagavad, you can see anywhere. Believed and lost, no places. Not believed and lost, many cases are there. Right? So Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Kaunteya Prasijani hi na me bhakta pranasyati. How Kaunteya Arjuna just take a pledge. What? Na me bhakta pranasyati. I never ignore my devotees. I never ignore my devotees. Even you never ignore your devotees. I took pledge. Why I should take pledge? You yourself can take a pledge. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say by yourself, why should I say on your behalf? Then Krishna said, look, if I say, I may, I may give it up at times. But if my devotee says, I see that it is always followed. It should not fail. Whatever my devotee preaches, it should not fail. For the sake of my devotee's preach, even I give up my own preach. You know, there is a saying, Apana man bhale tal jabe bhaktam kaman na tal te dekha. And 
ਤੇ ਸੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣਾ ਮਾਨ ਭਲੇ ਟਲ ਜਾਵੇ ਲੈਟ ਮਾਈ ਫਰਸਟੇਜ ਗੋ ਬਟ ਆਈ ਨੇਵਰ ਐਲੋ ਦ ਫਰਸਟੇਜ ਆਫ ਮਾਈ ਡਿਊਟੀਸ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਆਈ ਸਟੈਂਡ ਰਾਈਟ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਹੀ ਪ੍ਰੂਵਡ ਵਿਦ ਪ੍ਰਹਲਾਦ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਹੀ ਪ੍ਰੂਵਡ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਭਿਸ਼ਮਾ ਜਾਰੀ ਯੂ نو ਹੀ ਟੂ ਕੇਪ ਇਟ ਇਨ ਭਿਸ਼ਮਾ ਜਾਰੀ ਟੂ ਕੇਪ ਇਟ ਹੀ ਗੇਵ ਅਪ ਹਿਸ ਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਬਟ ਹੀ he fulfills the prayer of krishna acharya prahla dese god is able way to fulfill his prayer god appeared in the form of you know something un un predictable form no narad simha so he gives priority to the prayers of his devotees at the cost of even his own prayer he now minds even if his prayer is failed that is his, his very nature so he says you take a bridge and then i see that it is for you if i take a bridge then i may lose it for somebody's bridge but if you take i never allow it to fail the con take it this what he says so he says i never ignore my duties i always take care of my duties name bhakta pranasya Usually people think that pranasthiti means he never gets spoiled, right? That's what people think. But it's not the meaning. Pranasthiti means nas is a root in Sanskrit. Nas. Adar is a name. Nas means not visible, invisible. That is other, that is nasya. Nasya means invisible. Invisible doesn't mean that it, it, it is it destroyed. Something that is invisible to you may be visible to someone else. Invisible in this form is visible in some other form. Invisible at this place, visible maybe at some other place. So not having its losing its own identity will never happen anything that existing in this world anything if a tree is gone but the elements didn't go the elements remain in some other form in some other place with some other name you know in some other shape but the form what you saw like a tree with branches from leaves and so on is not there but it is there in some other form with some other name in some other shape right so that there will be branches like wood leaves probably must have been burnt and remains as ash and uh, the other branches and stuff must have been turned into coal, charcoal, and if you still burn the charcoal, anything, that's why you see, the trunk, the trunk must have been turned to different pieces of wood, and in some other places, with some other names, in some other forms, totally disappearance will not happen. disappearance with that form and name do not be there but the elements that are responsible to be called as tree will be there always some way some name like that no so that is what you call nash invisible pranas totally invisible totally invisible so krishna says me bhaktah pranasyati iti na na me bhakta pranasyati anch so me bhakta man devote pranasyati goes into invisibility na is not there what do you mean is always visible to me na me bhakta pranasyati iti is always visible to me but he did not say in a positive manner na pranasyati iti na negation negation na me bhakta pranasyati 
you know, pranas is not there. Pranas is not there. The invisibility is not at all there, is what he said. Invisibility is not there means what? There is clarity. The clarity is so much, I always see him, watch him. So, me bhaktaha na pranasthiti. I always keep an eye on my devotees. So, keeping an eye means there is a different meaning. <laughs> no, it gives a derogative meaning, but it's not the thing. I always taking care of my devotees. Always take care of my devotees. And never ignore them at all. That's what he says. You say that, I follow. That's what he said. Yeah. Then again the question will be the same. So you see, if he doesn't you know, ignore the devotees, why should we then cry? Why should we go through so many pains and tortures and troubles and so on and so forth? Maybe he thought that is good for you. And no, for giving you something in return. So if he is giving some pain to you, means probably he must be giving something, a good thing for you tomorrow. For giving something good tomorrow, he must be giving something that is a bit painful to you. You think that it's painful, but really it may not be painful to you. It may be good for you. You know, sometimes a doctor push an injection to the body, and when you, he's pushing, then you feel so bad. Let's see what a doctor is. You know, he's killing me like anything. You think so. But though it is temporarily hurting you, but it is good for you. It helps you in promoting good health. And tomorrow, all the problems in the body will go away. And the body gains good health. Ultimately, you feel the joy of it. So that's good. But this is at the micro level. And when you go to the macro level, I think the same thing. When somewhere something happens, you know, it is a probably God found good for the world, for the future. That's why he must have given this small thing. Otherwise, we have been damaged so much. That's how it is taken. So, in God's protection, there is no late at all. So, and it never fails also. Do something that never fails. And you need to have a kind of faith in it, a strong, unshakable faith. This is a kind of faith, Vishwasam, Adhyavasaya. That is what Krishna is saying, Raja, believe in me like that. That is what he said. Vachika Kahika Ngadam Idhikku Apekshita Ngadai Yuru Kacche Deyum Jnanan moksham, abhyale, mana samana, anushthanattai, sarva giradu. There are three instruments given by God for all the human beings, of course. One is walk, word, and second one is the mind to think, and third instrument is the body to work. So work and uh, think and speak. You know, these are the three instruments: walk, kaya, and karma. Mano Vak Kaya. Vak, speak. 
speech, think and act. Right? These are the three instruments. They are called as the three karanams. So all these three karanams should go together. They should match with each other. Among these three, the walk sometimes may not be expressing things properly. And physically, you may not be able to do things properly, but still, your mind should properly judge and decide. And if the proper judgment is there, then these things, even at times, may not cooperate, but still it is okay. But once the judgment is perfect and that is done, no problem. So here what he says, Vachika Kaikangadam Iruku Apekshitangada Iruka Chedeyam to have the faith in him, to adopt him. And the Vachikam is for verbal surrenderance is also important. Physical surrenderance is also important. But in spite of both, but when we talk about the Moksha, so it is said in Dharma Sastra. Like jnana mokram. Mokram comes out of jnana, out of knowledge. But what a kind of knowledge? This is what probably all of us must have heard. Jnana mokram. Out of jnana, mokram comes. But what kind of jnana that we need for moksha? What kind of jnana? Is it just a Sudhajnana? It is said Ardha Panchika Jnana. Ardha Panchika Jnana. Or what is said is Tattva Jnana Moksha. Tattva Jnana Moksha. You need to know about the concepts with their realities, with their real nature. That is called, you know, Tattva Traya Jnana. There are three major three entities. God is an entity and Prakriti is an entity and the soul is an entity. So the existence of all these three elements is permanent. No one needs to create, no one needs to destroy also. They are always there, all the three. If you are able to understand these three properly, and of course, when you know yourself and you understand the means as well. And if you know yourself, you understand the ultimate goal also. That's how we need to have the jnana of either artha panchaka jnana or tattva kraya jnana. If you have such jnana, tat jnana moksha. With that knowledge, you attain moksha. Why is talk so important as mind and body? Hmm? Why is talk, walk so important as mind and body? Because there is a very powerful weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it can kill you. It can hurt. It can soothe. It can console. It can earn. It can do anything. But actions are more important. Sometimes uh, to act, you, uh, your, your lips may not cooperate, but still it is okay. See, for a deceased person, when the legs become, uh, what you call, paralyzed, or something, some kind of stuff like that, then he may not be able to walk. Sometimes the hands doesn't work, but still it is okay. But at least if the walk is there, you can do everything. Right? So walk is very, very important in that sense. Just for man, for man, for other things, walk is not that important. But for man, you can manage everything with the power of word, communication. The communication is perfect and you get everything. The communication goes wrong, Jivagre Maranam Dravam. 
Yeah, this is what actually the great leaders of the world have inspired thousands of people, lakhs of people. The world power, they did the whole thing. And some people not able to use it properly, lost their lives.